Okay, so now this one is a coil pot demonstration. I don't actually have a demo that I pre-made for you, um, but this is a multi-step uh, tutorial, um, so you'll kind of see it take shape uh, literally as, as we go. Um, coil pot is like a pinch pot. Um, in fact, you actually need to begin with a pinch pot, or at least a slab of clay, and a slab is a flat piece of clay. Um, it's just more involved and can take longer. You can do this over multiple sittings. Uh, do remember that if you want to set your clay aside and be able to use it in a couple of days when you have more time maybe, um, wrap it up with plastic. Plastic, um, I get mine usually just from any sort of plastic bag from, uh, from food that I buy, um, or packaging, like inside of an Amazon box, not that I order from Amazon, or condone their work ethics, um, but it's something like that. Soft plastics that can move, like bend without crinkling too much are good, um, to wrap around and not make impressions in your piece. So, first I'm going to make kind of a wide foot for my, my, um, coil pot. Um, this is going to be what I'm going to be, uh, what I'm going to work off of. So I'm going to smooth out any cracks. This clay has been sitting out for a little bit, so it's getting a little dry, but that's why we have a little finger dish. I'm going to move it over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just dabbing my finger. I have some slip in here to use if I want, but it's, it's also just water. And I'm kind of making a hockey puck. Remember, you don't want anything to be um, thicker than a quarter inch. Uh, so I'm just kind of moving this piece around. It's using a similar technique to my little pinch cup, this little guy, um, where I'm just making sure to rotate it with every pinch. Um, and once I get to, I don't know what that is, let's see, where's my handy handy ruler? This is about one centimeter or a half inch. Um, I'm going to place it down because what I want here is um, a nice flat bottom and I want to keep the edges from getting too flat but I'm going to scoop around, rotate. A lot of people have something called a banding wheel. Um, when you get more seriously into pottery you can get more tools but I'm using only tools that you might just have around or in a basic pottery kilt be kit because that's what you'll be using until you have more tools or have access to an open studio. You want to rotate the piece and kind of scoop out. I'm thinning out the middle of my little hockey puck, but giving the edges a chance to remain walls. Um, a coil pot is using a base, like this little piece, little pot, um, and then you build on top using score and slip. So scoring is when you scratch and slip is the goop that's made of liquid clay that you use um, to attach pieces. So we also say scratch and attach in the kids' studio that I work at, and I find that that's a pretty clear um, description of what's going on. So I'll show that to you. I'm almost ready for that step. Um, I'm making kind of like a little mug. You can make mugs and vases and pencil holders or sculptural pieces. I had a friend who made um, these really massive, beautiful, organic-shaped um, coil pots that she had actually cut slabs, which are flat pieces of clay, that were really big and used them as coils. And the pieces that she would make were so tall that they didn't fit into a kiln. And she'd have to cut the pieces into uh, like thirds or fourths so that she could fire them individually and then reattach them post-firing with glue or cement. Um, or some sort of metal armature from the inside. It was very cool. I think it was her thesis project for her her bachelor's. She was also a potter. I, I um, had a couple classes with her uh, back at uh, CSU Channel Islands. Um, she has now gone on to do her master's. Actually, it's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now I have this piece and I wanna show you there, there are some cracks here. You will find those as you go along. You can just add a little more water, maybe a little bit of slip to try to fill in those cracks. Not too much slip, just enough, and then you work it in. Work, work it in there. Great. So now what you have is a base, kind of a little dish. It's kind of similar to the technique, but um, without the rolling pin. 
that I showed you for like these little guys. You get a pretty uniform wall here. So that's another uh, idea for maybe if you wanted to make a tchotchke dish using that technique and just call it a day here. But what I'm gonna do is set this aside for a moment and I'm gonna show you a couple of coil techniques. So I've already pre-made this little log just by squeezing um, the clay and see it's starting to dry out. You can see the cracks here. So I wanna add a little more moisture. If you have a fine mist spray bottle, that's really great to use. Um, you can just spray from a distance so it's not like soaking the clay, but just getting it lightly misted. I have one, but I don't feel like going and grabbing it and it's not that necessary. So now we're gonna make some coils. I'm using a wooden desk, so the water that I have on my clay is being absorbed somewhat by the wood. This is actually good because you don't want your piece to stick to a plastic or glass surface. So you just make some snakes. They don't need to be perfectly round or tube-like, you know? It could be kind of flat, it could be kind of wonky. It's not that necessary. Some people really like their coils to be perfect and have a tool, a special tool for it called an extru extruder. You can have a hand extruder or a wall-mounted extruder. Um, both are useful for different reasons. The hand extruder makes smaller coils, usually in the um, wall mounted, come on little ants. Um, we're having an ant invasion right now, just mostly in the outside though. Um, the wall mounted co uh, extruder will make bigger, bigger coils and even hollow coils, so like literal tubes, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now we have this um, little tube, little um, noodle. I like to work with semi-flat noodles, coils, and I'll show you why in a moment. By leaving this one flat and this one round, I'll show you what happens. So, I have my little hockey puck, right? My little dish. Now I want to attach this clay because I want to build the wall of my clay upwards. But if I were to just try to squish this together, it wouldn't be very strong or uniform. So what I want to do is I want to take my needle tool, or if you have a fine wire brush tool, which I actually have, um, mine's a little mangled, <laughs> you can see that it, it might be a little bit more together than this one, but this is pretty great, it just makes a light, you just lightly scratch along where you want to attach, you want to scratch where, both sides that you attach, so the thing that you're attaching to and the thing that you're attaching so scratch, 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 scratch. Okay, so that's pretty scratched. Now, the bottom of this is what I'm gonna be scratching because that's where I'm gonna be attaching. There's gonna be a little bit of noise in this video, so um, just bear with me here if there's a ATV or motorcycle going by, they're having some fun. It's uh, my neighbors down the street to get a little quarantine crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so I've added some slip. Notice that I haven't added a huge amount of slip, but enough to fill in those little lines that I put in there. So the reason I like my coils to be flat is because that's kind of about the width that I want my wall to be. Now I'm going to add this on. Note that it doesn't go all the way around and that's totally fine. Um, because eventually you'll end up just snaking it around like that so it's like a snail it just goes like over and over and over. Um, there's another tool that I think that you should have um, that's pretty helpful and that tool is anything that's kind of flat. It could be this kind of wooden tool, it can be a larger wooden tool. Um, you could have a plastic one, honestly it's fine. Uh, you could even use a rib tool which is that wooden kind of thing that I gave you. It's flat, kind of like this shape with a hole in it. Um, this is a, a rib tool I made out of my old ID. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so you use this and what you're going to do is you're going to smooth where you attached. So this kind of creates a stronger bond. And what you can't see right now is that on the inside, where I'm applying pressure from the outside, I have my finger bracing it so that if I put pressure, it doesn't make the whole thing fall apart. So it's like I'm pinching using my finger and this tool. I'm gonna use a little bit of water to try to keep that clay nice and hydrated. 
Okay. This just takes a little bit of time because you have to attach, you have to make the coils, you have to smooth it out, but you can make some really beautiful pieces using the coil technique. Um, another friend of mine uh, in the same class that I had a, with a sculptor who made those big pieces made a vase and a pitcher that looked like they had been thrown on the wheel using nothing but coils. It took her like three months, maybe. Um, it was cool. It was really cool to watch. Anyways, you want to smooth the outside and then you want to take, um, instead of the knife, you want to use this. It's kind of like a pointier finger tool and you want to smooth the inside it's equally as important. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what you want to do is join. I'll show you what I mean by not perfect in a moment. So in here, you see all these little lines. That's me pressing the clay and creating a stronger bond, pressing down. And remember, keeping pressure on the outside when I'm pressing in from the inside. So now we have this, and now we can go in with a little water in this tool. Um, and we can smooth it out, and now it's really pretty bonded. Right? And in your beginning stages, you don't really need to focus on it being perfect. Um, if you're a perfectionist, like don't feel bad if you spend a lot of time on this, but one of the things is that if you spend a lot of time, your clay is going to start drying out and you don't want it to get too dry. So I'll show you what happens when I just rolled this one. I didn't really flatten it. Um, so it's kind of like a, it's like a little noodle and I now have to do more scratch and attach. So. This already here has some scratching, just reinforcing it. And now I'm gonna add some scratching here, just a little bit to get it at an angle. Um, and then I'm gonna take my tube, or my noodle, um, and I'm gonna scratch the bottom of the noodle. I'm gonna get some of this little slip that I have made. Slip is primarily just water and clay to a consistency that kind of, it's not, totally pourable, but it's um, it's definitely softer than peanut butter. And you can add it to this side or that side. You've seen me now do it on the coil and on the pot. Either one works. Okay, so now I'm going to add it here. And let's see, it was pretty long, so I'm going to have to add some here too. Yep. Got more slip, got more slip. And then pressing down gently while pinching to hold the wall up. I don't wanna press down and totally deflate my wall. So I am now at layer two, which means that I start layering on top my first coil, not just the base of my piece. And when you have round coils, which you might actually prefer, you have to do a little bit more smoothing or else you get a rippled effect. And sometimes that's desirable and sometimes it's not. Um, I like to have pretty smooth walls, so I do it, but that doesn't mean that it's how you should always do it. Okay, so as you can imagine, as I'm adding, my walls are gonna get taller. We're gonna skip a little bit of time here so that I don't just take up your time blabbing at you while I'm slowly, slowly adding um, clay on here. Um, but again, this is a great activity to do while you're listening to a podcast or, you know, like watching your favorite TV show, whatever. Um, you don't need a lot of your concentration on making it perfect. You just want to make sure that you're doing your scratch and attach. Um, and that's really important. Uh, actually, before we take a little break, I do want to show you how to do another coil technique. Um, you saw me use a rolling pin and this cloth before and another, or you will, don't know what order you're watching these. Um, so here's my napkin, my linen napkin, and I'm going to put this piece of clay that I've kind of flattened out already. Fold my napkin. And what I'm doing is making a slab. This is going to be a way to make multiple coils at the same time. This te technique does leave you with 
flat coils versus rounded coils, which you could use um, for this coil technique or you could make handles. Now, remember, we want to make sure to be turning the clay often because we don't want it to be stretched in all one direction because clay shrinks in the direction that it was stretched. Okay, don't want to be too thin. You can use slab guides, which I'll show you in a future date, um, but I just kind of eyeball it because I'm not making tiles so they don't need to be perfectly the same um, width. Okay, so now I have this slab. How do I make this into coils? Uh -huh. You use your needle tool and you make stripes. I kind of want them to be roughly the same height, but it, I don't really think it matters much. Um, so now you have all these little coils. They're kind of short, so you'll need a multiple of them um, in order to go around the thing perfectly. So basically, you'll just I'm going to demonstrate. I'm not going to use a uh, slip and score, but this is kind of see how I have these different angles. They attach like that. I'm going to switch that down. Basically, you'll just continue to add clay, scoring and slipping every time. And after we take a little break, I'll show you what happened. I'll just go up all the way up until you reach a desired height. When you get taller than, let's say, I'd say four to, between four and six inches, depending on the type of clay, you can't really add any on while the clay is still pretty wibbly and wobbly and wet because your your uh, walls can't sustain that, that, that weight. So you'll have to do it in multiple uh, stages with time to allow it to dry a little bit. But let's take a little break so then you can see what happens after I add all these with score and slip.